Hi there and welcome to this second video which is on basic flight on uh, with the SA342, the Gazelle. Um, let's address the elephant in the room, Golf Echo. The flight model, yes he says. Um, this is a very big issue in the ED community, in DCS. There is a, it's a very divisive and very f and fairly contentious with regards to the flight medal, uh, flight medal, flight model. A lot of people saying that it does it doesn't feel right, um, and uh, it doesn't fly right, etc. Well, look, here's my view on this. If you're a Gazelle pilot, then your input is valid. If you're not a Gazelle pilot, then you should inspect and not expect. Uh, what we shouldn't be doing as sim pilots is jumping in um, a high fidelity model like this and then being quite so criti critical with regards to the flight model. The Gazelle is a very, very light aircraft, 1800 odd kilos, um, and this particular model, of course, is the 342. So we've got four Hot 3 missiles attached, we've got a Vivian, uh, Vivian um, uh, sighting system. And ultimately, um, the SA-342 was upgraded for its engine and its rotors in order to be able to produce the right amount of power to be able to fly this thing. Um, and Gazelle pilots have tested this, and their feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. It's about perceptions and expectations. They can expect their Gazelle pilots. We should inspect, um, because we're not Gazelle pilots. And in, in, in my view, over the past year, being quiet on this and reading a lot of forums, a lot of people have jumped into this sim and tried to fly it like it was a K50, uh, an MI24, an MI8, whatever. It's not. This is a tiny bird. It's a light bird. And so actually you need hardly any input whatsoever. Take uh, Casmo and uh, Gizmo's advice. It's all the Mo's, isn't it? Golf Echo. Um, and their advice um, is very simple, and that is reduce the saturation. Um, the Gazelle is such a light helicopter. Um, as I said, I've done about 20 odd hours in, in this particular sim. The first thing I noticed was how light she is. You get to about 50 degrees on the torque meter, on the torque indicator there, and she's super light on the skids. You're flying it straight away from the word go. Um, and, uh, and that's not a quote, although, ironically, a real Gazelle pilot has said that. He said, you know, you're flying this aircraft from the minute that you start to move that collective. And that's certainly the case. Um, so the, I'm going to take it that, that you, you have played with it or you've flown it and um, either you didn't get on with it or you just want a bit of revision or you're just being, you know, being friendly in the community and seeing what someone else is putting out out there about flying the Gazelle. But, um, you know, I'll do my best not to... Um, not to, because I know he's watching. Um, okay, right. A couple. Uh, but what, if you're a beginner, then uh, don't let this bird um, scare you off. It's a, it's a fantastic little bird. Watch the control indicators on the left-hand side here. This box here will represent my cyclic or my stick, as you can see in the middle. It's currently in centre. Uh, forward, backwards, left and right. Uh, at the bottom here, this line on the axis here is the rudder and on the left hand side is the collective and that line there represents where that collective is. A couple of dials that we're going to be making sure that we glance at as we're using a bit of uh, vision um, as we're looking around and that is this dial here is our torque indicator. Um, and this dial here, which is our VVI, our vertical velocity indicator in hundreds of meters a minute um, up to 800 meters a minute and this here tells us the torque of the engine now in video one I put the flag there the visual flag not the alarm flag but the visual flag at 90 about 95 percent torque you're going to start to get this light here flashing at you uh, if you don't do something about it then actually 12 minutes here 12 seconds later the engine's going to blow up so be very very careful that's for me to for me to say that's my maximum um, and you can't fly this bird like you maybe fly other birds. She's super light from the word go. So as soon as you take off, um, you're, you're flying her. And you'll notice that the controls that I put in are, are going to be m absolutely minuscule. You can't fly this like the K50 or the MI24 where you really are bullying it. Uh, she's going to want to flick to the left because of the rotors, so we're going to give it some right rudder. And around about 40s, we just very, very slowly increase the collective. She's now light on the skids. 
probably at zero degrees in pitch. Um, there's no pitch indicator in this uh, helicopter, only the torque here. But I reckon around about 40% um, is um, zero degrees. I'd be interested to know um, from my from my buddy Golf Echo whether that is the case but I reckon 40% 40, 40 is about zero degrees so as soon as we start to get to 50% and we are super 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 gentle super light as soon as we get to about 50% she's up and you're flying it straight away and you can't fly this like the K50 you are constantly putting input in just to keep this thing uh, as, as steady as possible uh, it really wants to move around um, uh, this is hard for me to talk and do this at the same time but I can tell you now that this is not a K50 or an MI24 and for a sim pilot this is what I would expect flying a helicopter isn't easy you've got to pass fixed wing before you go uh, in, in the military for example to rotary wing um, you know flying, flying an aircraft is easier you need a lot of control you're spinning plates and balls on sticks and all sorts of things just to keep this steady it's incredibly difficult um, and incredibly rewarding once you've put all that effort in so you know in the hover as I am doing a very bad example of, of giving you here now you are putting lots and lots and lots of uh, input in uh, tiny tiny input gentle input if you if you keep it in one position for too long and that too long is milliseconds she's going to move so you really are putting lots of control in uh, lo lots of small tiny tiny inputs um, to be able to get it um, steady and like I said I'm doing a very very bad job and that's after about 20 odd hours crikey so let's uh, let's let's stabilize ourselves okay I'm gonna put <laughs> It's you know a real challenge, and you can see how much I've moved off so far. A real challenge, um, but if you get it right, it's incredibly rewarding. Now, okay, you'll notice that I've got right rudder, um, and I said that this doesn't fly like a normal. Uh, I say like a normal helicopter, like the other modules that you may have flown, um, and we'll find that out as we start to move. Let's now move forward a little bit and start to transition into forward flight. And the first thing to know is that when you get to about 100 kilometers, you'll notice that I'm going to start to equalize my rudder. And my rudder is going to be slowly equalized. By the time I get to 100 kilometers, I'm neutral rudder. This aircraft will fly on rails after 100, um, purely and simply because... Uh, of the way the Fenestron system works. I'm not sure if they've simulated, but I've heard it's a non-linear system. So, you know, you don't need to give right rudder, um, you know, constantly. If you come from the K50 world, then you've come from, you've come from giving left cyclic and right rudder to balance out the contra-rotating rotors. There is no requirement to do that with um, the Gazelle. You've got to be super light on it. And, you know, I set my set my flag there on the rotors on the torque indicator there at 90% and I'll explain that in a minute at the minute I'm flying it you know as if I would fly a K50 I've got my hands on the collective all the time I'm uh, I'm keeping an eye on the VVI I'm uh, looking at my altitude my speed I'm constantly putting input in and I'm constantly adjusting my collective to keep myself at the altitude that I want but actually I found um, as I said I'm not not a real pilot just <laughs> just a big kid with a game that's played it a lot um, did I say game Jesus shoot me um, but what I found was that that is not the best way to fly the gazelle um, and whether it's true to life or not I don't know I'm not a gazelle pilot um, but what I do know is um, how to be able to utilize the sim to the to the best strengths of the way in which I fly helicopters and I've been flying sim helicopters for many many years um, so uh, and I'll tell you what that is and it may well be the secret I suppose and that is as follows and I've got a funny feeling that my friend here is gonna close his eyes in a minute but what you can do in the gazelle is pretty much set that torque at maximum I'm gonna put it to 90 here we are we're at 90 keep your eye on the VVI there because what I found is set the torque achieve the altitude that you want 
using uh, I'm, I've got my hands off the collective I'm not touching the collective at all um, achieve the altitude that I want get it into zero on the VVI trim into position let go turn on my turn on my altitude whoops where, where is it is that <laughs> hang on where is it oh no uh, turn on my altitude hold there it is, yeah. Uh, turn on my altitude hold. Let's make sure. The key secret to that is when you trim, make sure you're at zero degrees, a zero on the VVI, sorry, before you... Let's reset. Before you do it. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, and uh, she will stay... She will stay there all day. Um, unless, of course, you go over the sort of damping authority. Um, she'll stay there all day. So... You know, map the altitude and uh, speed button, uh, speed uh, toggle switch there to your HOTAS. Um, and that is how I found is the best way to fly this at the, at the maximum speed, particularly if you're buster to a location for a particular mission. So, uh, we'll take that off now and we'll now take it off of trim. And we've now recentered it. And an interesting um, point that gizmo made on his video who is a, an ex royal navy gazelle pilot and he said something quite interesting which was that unlike other helicopters in the in, in dcs world um that um you know if you if you press left if, if you pull uh, you know push left on the on the stick on the cyclic and the gazelle it will keep going left and i'll give you an example of that it will just keep going um, center position on the cyclic is center position um, for your trim essentially so um, so let me give you an example of that so here we are we're going along here I'm manually flying it um, I'm trying to keep zero degrees I've got the altitude that I want and I'm doing 80 something on the so I'm not going to touch the collective let's pop that up to 90 I'm not going to touch it at all but at 90 percent on the torque I could trim this into position now and flick altitude on uh, on the autopilot damping channel and just leave it like 220 is about the maximum you're going to get because of the extra weight by the hot three missiles they're about 32 kilos each plus you've got the Vivian system on top etc but you know just keep your eye on the control indicator there um, as we for example we do a hammerhead now look I'm going to pull back and then let go. My hands are off. It'll automatically come round. We can now just recenter with our rudder. And away we go. We haven't got I haven't touched the I haven't touched the collective. I can keep the collective there where it is. Um, and I've just done a 75 degree hammerhead. There's no no need to reduce the collective as you would do, say, with a K50. Um, if you reduce the collective on the gazelle when you're doing something like a hammerhead she will fall out of the sky so um you know things like hammerheads in, in a gazelle it, it are super super uh, easy to do and a lot of fun of course and if you fly as I do sometimes in VR scares the living crap out of you I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do it in real life bloody hell's fire no thank you um, but that's why that's why we mess around with sims I suppose so there we go you know that's maybe a little trick for you you know flying this thing you know set the torque that you want which is relative to the top speed that you will achieve achieve the altitude that you want by using pitch only don't mess around with the collective leave it where it is where you've set it uh, achieve the altitude that you want uh, let's say 200 meters that's do point to note is the outer meter there the barometric altitude um, meter is in meters not feet uh, this is all very metric in here uh, achieve the altitude that you want gain zero on your VVR zero um, zero zero meters per minute trim into position and then apply altitude hold and she will stay like that unless of course you bully her by um, by extreme movement on the uh, on the stick um, and you go over the damper in authority then you no know, she will uh, she will simply you know, lose it 
Okay, right, so that's just a basic hovering, basic hovering, basic... Um, uh, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe some people would look upon that as advanced, i.e. hammerhead, but I just wanted to demonstrate how naturally, how wonderful this is a, a, a fantastic sim, a fantastic module to fly, and the characteristics of the Gazelle. You couldn't do a hammerhead like that in a KA-50 or an MI-24. You would have to be, you'd be pumping the collective all the bloody time. Um, there's absolutely no need to do that in the, in the Gazelle. Um, now, when it comes to using the Gazelle in missions on uh, in DCS World, well, you know, look around, it's all glass, you know, and you only need one or two rounds from, you know, one or two small arms rounds in here, and that's it, game over for you, you know, there's nothing to her. So, um, my advice to you is to use your hot three missiles if you're uh, on ground attack at distance, about 4.3 k's, look out for video 3, part 3, we'll be covering that. Um, and you want to be utilising the uh, auto hover feature and then using pop-up tactics. Now, let's say um, we're going to do that now, we're going to use that building over there. So let's go and set up ourselves in a hover just behind there. Uh, coming into a hover, it says in the manual, in the flight manual, that a safe rate to descend into a hover is about 60 metres a minute, which is where that line is on the VVI there. But this aircraft is so light, um, it's so light that it, it's almost difficult to get it into a vortex ring state. I'm sure you probably can, but it's so light that, uh, you, know, I, you know, personally I'd say you can come down a lot more than that. But just remember that as you're going to come down and you're slowing down the speed, that actually you're going to start to get to a point where you're going to have to start to give right rudder, otherwise she is going to then want to start to spin to the left. So, we're coming to a sort of semi sort of hover now. Now the key thing with the hovering of the, uh, of the, the key, bad, bad example, just, just trying to talk and do this at the same time. Uh, the key thing with hovering the gazelle, um, when you're in a manual, is you've got to do two things. One, you've got to achieve the hover, that's the first phase. Second phase is then you've got to activate pretty much as quick as you can, you've got to activate auto hover. And you've got to do one immediately after the other. Now, looking at the main horizon artificial indicator in the front there, you can see the two white lines there. The whole point is to get them, uh, get them uh, crossing each other. Now, don't get dial fixed, is my advice. Um, you know, look at the ground. And it's hard to do it the higher up you are. So don't be at all afraid to come right the way down. You know, just mind the fact of what your uh, descent rate is. Keep it around the recommended sort of, you know, 60 to 100, I'd say, to be fair. Um, don't, don't be afraid to come right the way down. Hold the trim in. Hold it 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 in. Achieve your, achieve your uh, hover. And then let go. Uh, now, as soon as you've uh, let go of your trim and you've pressed the um, the auto hover feature she will sit there all day so how do we use the pop-up technique now well we map a collective break I've used my pinky on the stick here and as soon as we press that we're then going to take over authority of the collective damper um, so we need to be mindful of a couple of things firstly that we don't really want to climb anything more anything more I would say than about you know, 150 metres a minute. That's my advice. Um, so, you know, no more than about 150 metres a minute. Um, and let's face it, you're either in a recce roll or you're in a uh, ground attack roll. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't want to show your cards too quickly. <laughs> you you want to get to a certain point where we're using good cover from fire and cover from view. In this case, a building. Suits me, suits me fine. Um, but cover from view with regards to trees is perfectly fine as well. Um, and all we need to do is we need to activate the collective brake and then uh, take control of the, uh, of the um, ascend rate with our collective. So let's do that now. 
Now, be very, very gentle. If there's one thing that I've known um, from flying this bird from the time that I have, is you can't bully it. It's such a, uh, it's such a unique model that you, you, you've got to be super gentle. Get it to the altitude you want, press the collective back in, collective brake back in, and she'll re-establish at zero, uh, uh, zero meters per minute. Points to note about this, if you're in multiplayer mode, I'm not sure if it works. If you've got someone else in the cockpit, as I'm lucky enough to have Golf Echo, but well, he's just a passenger today. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure if it works. And I'm not sure whether this is a real um, uh, capability of the uh, real gazelle um, in, in the real world. But in DCS, I think it's been implemented so that actually you can enjoy being in uh, the other seat. Oh, we've swapped places, Golf Echo. Um, so, um, you know, you can establish the hover and you can enjoy being in control of the HOT3 uh, missile system or the uh, the target acquisition system or indeed feeding information from the battlefield, um, i.e. Uh, intelligence preparation of the battlefield. So um, so there we are. So that's how we establish a, uh, a hover and put it into auto hover and how we use our collective brake to pop up and to descend. And I would suggest that descend is around about the same, about 150 meters uh, a minute. Do please put a comment in the section below there if you think that there is a, a, a safer rate. What I do know is this, and that is if you're too rough with your collective uh, and descending or ascent, you'll override the dampers and uh, you will instantly um, come, <laughs> you will instantly come a cropper. Right, let's take control of the aircraft again. Notice that um, I am moving my rudder to equalise out where the current, um, where the current uh, autopilot is, so that when I, uh, when I turn off the auto hover, I'm already in a position, moving my collective to match, already in a position, so that hopefully there's less, uh, less problems in transition from an auto system to a manual. So let's, let's see how we get on with that. There we go. Not not too, not too bad. Um, right. Well, there we go. Um, I don't think there's much more to cover, really. I mean, uh, yeah, I might do a video if you want me to with regards to some sort of um, coordinated turns and things like that. But for when it comes to, you know, flying this, my advice is this. Don't expect inspect. Uh, we're not helicopter pilots. And if you are a helicopter pilot... Uh, like Casmo and all the other fantastic fellas out there, then your input is valid, um, and your not your input is valid. Your point is valid, and the rest of us should be listening to that. With the Gazelle, the advice from pilots has been this: it's a light aircraft. Don't expect to fly it like the K50, the MI8, or the MI24. It it takes super tiny, tiny, tiny inputs, gentle inputs. She's a gentle, gentle bird. Uh, very capable, but you can't bully your way round with the Gazelle. It's so light. Use saturation with regards to your pitch and roll um, and uh, 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 rudder as well. And uh, Gizmo has given some advice there. So is Casmo and a few others. I personally have a linear setup, but I have saturation to 80%. Uh, yeah, 80%. I have 80% on pitch and 80% on roll, I believe. So, um, and the reason for that is because, you know, she will, she is so, so light. And, of course, I'm using a HOTAS and I'm using the stick, which is, you know, what, from my hand, you know, three inches away from the point of rotation. If you're using a stick setup, like a lot of lads have with proper full simulators, etc., well, your moving of the cyclic for what is essentially one centimetre for me, maybe, you know, eight inches. So use saturation. Um, and at the end of the day, just remember, this is not a KA-52 uh, or a KA-50. Uh, this is not going to be what the Apache is. This aircraft is light, small, um, and uh, essentially not, not a lot of power. 800, I think it's about 880 horsepower, something like that, this engine. Um, even though it's been uprated for the 341, the Vivienne and the Hot 3 missile system. So, yeah, that's my parting message with you, is enjoy flying her, um, but be very, very gentle. Know that from about 40% to 50%, she is pretty light on her feet. Um, and as you transition into flight, reduce your right rudder to 
uh, equalise around about 100, uh, 100 kilometres an hour. That's another thing. It's not in knots. So 220, you know, maximum speed with this setup with three hot three missiles. We'll pop it up. There it is. There it is. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get maximum speed. And there's something to, to bear in mind a lot. You know, we're at maximum speed you're going to be in this uh, in this helicopter with this setup at the minute. And that's about 110 knots, uh, 220 kilometres an hour. It's in kilometres an hour, not knots. So just bear that in mind. Right, there we go. Basic flight in the SA342 Gazelle. Uh, join me in video three where we'll be covering how to utilise the HOT3 um, weapon system uh, for some ground targets. Till next time then, bye bye.